Hello everybody, how are you today? 2006 Buick Lucerne CXL startup and engine bay look around. We're going to exercise the automatic start. I think it's lock and this, but when I, I'll try it one other way first. So check this out. If you hold this down, I think nothing. Yes, hit lock. There. I haven't turned this car on since Tuesday. I came home Tuesday, September 7th. I backed it in, I shut it off, and I've been home since with personal matters. Nothing bad. So this was the first start of today. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me tell you what today is. Today is Saturday. September something, 2021. Today's the 18th. Saturday, September 18th, 2021. Let's pop the engine. Hood. I'm sorry. Before I do that and the car shuts off, you unlock the car. You take the key. You put the key in the ignition. You turn it. I will hit the brake just in case. Okay. I don't know if that engages or disengages anything, but I just wanted to make sure. Now the car is running on the, from the key. Also, I am so sorry. Previously, I didn't show you this. I'm going to show it to you now because I'm... Whatever. These buttons right here. Let you know one trip. Trip B, my fuel range, my average fuel economy, the instant economy, the average speed that I was driving, probably leading into parking the car, and nothing. I have 76% oil life remaining. I'd like to keep it in English. The park assist is on. Tire pressure system, compass system, Calabrette, papa. Oh, we learned the remote key. Everything else right here has to do with my personal settings. So let's do that. Oh! Oh! Tally ho, chip chop. The hood is open. It has a latch <laughs> which goes up. Let's see, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to... Okay, so here's my finger on the Buick. I'm just showing you because here's the emblem. It goes to the right. Right, up. And it has a single piston. That stops there. And you bring it up. Bring it up, just because it's probably original. That's about where I want to keep it. She's a butte clock. Very quiet. Ish. Here's your radiator, here's your shroud. If you want to remove this, you push in, and then these pop up, this plastic thing comes out, exposing the radiator right here. Here's your air intake into your air filter, which unfortunately needs two hex screws 
to remove, so you can't do it on the fly. Here's the ignition coil, coils, which they still use spark plugs. And there's the firing cylinders. That's one, four, five, two, three, six. A couple of awkward engine mounts, like a sideways engine mount. Radiator fluid seems good. There's the battery is under the seat. So if you need to jump it, here's your terminal that's constantly on with your battery voltage. Why every car has a battery sort of under here except there's some exotics or like Lamborghinis or for Ferraris, I don't know. I don't know why they couldn't of I don't know, redesigned it. <laughs> this piece comes off. You turn this and that's that. I'll show you that when the engine's off because when you turn this you can see the valves. Again, I've cleaned this up the best I could in order to make sure there was no new leaks or something. Top is always going to be somewhat leafy. Cabin air filter, ironically enough, is right there. You pop those two tabs and the filter sits like an S. While I detailed and cleaned the car, I did remove the silver from the emblem and whatever silver was left over here. And the V6 was all silver. So that's that. Let me shut it off and take off this plastic piece. Now that the engine is off, I'll show you how to remove the top plastic piece. Very, very awkward. Why would they also invent that? I don't know. You turn it to the turn right, right or left? Okay, we turn it to the left. Not even. <laughs> so that's 90. That's 45. <laughs> so and you take it off. It exposes some oil because that's where the oil is. You put it out of the way. You lift it this way. In the back, there's a little lip. I'll show you later. And you just remove it. There's the black metal piece. And there's the black nipple. Underneath it is conventional. It's heated, padded, not torn. And then you must at least put this back so you don't ruin it. I'll show you inside in a second. So here's your spark plugs and here's the top of your engine. And here's your intake and your intake manifold and everything that you would have to, would ever need. Very dusty, but not really. I told you I cleaned a couple things. I personally don't like like these things sitting here. I don't like that this sits here. I don't know if it gets hot, probably not, it's just the air. Like it's already like from 2006 till now, it's already like made an indentation. Like I can't believe there's just, there was no easier way to, to route this. <sighs> Pretty straightforward. Fuel injection, spark plugs would probably be a pain in the ass to change. The front valve cover, now all that stuff is easy because the car sits sideways and the transmission's right there because it's a front wheel drive car. The back spark plugs won't, wouldn't be a pain, but you definitely would need some odd angles and different kind of spark plug removal tools. I don't know when anything else was done or serviced except the fact that it has uh, tires from 2015 at 54,000 miles and I'm currently at 69. So the age surpassed the wear. Oil and filter change has been on the regular, whether it was in North Carolina or even last time up here. Filter was pure white for the air and pure white and clean for the cabin. That's it. 
There's a transmission dipstick on this car. There's the oil dipstick. A lot of cars don't have transmissions. I told you I ran through this real quick with a rig and a shop vac and a brush and I tried to just get rid of some of the sand that accumulates from this being the front of the engine and just, just stuff hitting it. Big exhaust manifold because it's three in the front, three in the back. Goes around the side, down and around, all this metal heat shrink shield. That's the one downfall I never liked about front wheel drive V6s is that the first half of the sixes are in the front. A true V6, like the Corvette I have, is sideways. Exhaust out this side, exhaust out that side. So all, even a four-cylinder, it comes out and either goes left and right. It's just almost like an afterthought. See some big-ass engine mounts down there. Uh, some big frame. There's so much room. Look at how much room is in the front with the two fans. Like... And then the ABS is down there, so that's the first thing to go if you get into a head-on collision, is your brakes. Other than that, for washer refill, I told you engine mount serpentine belt. Uh, for what it's worth, uh, Jesus. Alternators in the front, a couple of clips, a couple of screws, take off the belt. Obviously, the belt does the power steering and the water pump. This engine mount is in the way, so you'd have to disconnect that in order to get to this rigmarole. Um, am I missing anything? Any, you know, well, everything else talks to the engine, whatever this stuff is. I think that's about it. The wear and tear right there because the uh, engine cover sits there, so that was like a little aftermarket default. <laughs> Could have put a piece of rubber, maybe like half rubber, because then you don't want it digging into whatever that is. But that's kind of ironic. That's the fuel. The fuel line goes underneath here, comes up. This definitely is the fuel. It's teed off, which is like, okay. And it goes to each fuel rail. So the top plastic piece is rubbing against the fuel. Fuel line of all lines. Is your master cylinder and everything else is whatever you know, whatever this stuff is vacuum whatever I don't who cares it runs it drives it started right up hasn't given me a problem yet so that's it there's the engine 2006 Buick 3800 engine that's it thank you for watching this series of my Buick Lucerne any questions comments or any other things you want to see because you're curious or you may have a Buick yourself and you want to say hey can I see what kind of clamp you have here oh okay thank you no problem just shoot me a message hit like hit subscribe thank you